Welcome mm-hmm. to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. So today we're going to do a little bit of something different, not too much about the news. I've got Alex Becker here. He is the CEO of Hyrus, the data analytics firm. And what I want to talk to him about is probably one of the more important things that you're going to hear, which is what do you do when you suddenly become a millionaire? Because we're all talking about how great the cryptocurrency digital asset space is, how things are going to just propel us. But what happens when overnight you become a millionaire? What do you do? Do you make smart decisions and save types of things? Or do you make some really crazy purchases and do some dumb things? So I brought Alex on because he's done some dumb things just like me. And uh, this is a cautionary tale of what maybe to do and what not to do. First of all, Alex, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Tell us about the story. I mean, there's all sorts of stories and stuff like that. And there's nothing too dramatic. Like there's not going to be you know, where people go, they made their first millions of dollars and they lost all but doing something nuts. But for example, like one of the first things I did when my business took off is I went and got a Lamborghini and I remember the down payment on it was like 60,000. And there was like, I think like $130,000 in loans and stuff like that. If I put that in Bitcoin at the time, I'd be richer than God right now. But yeah, pretty much. Uh, I think this was like 2014 or something like that. But I'd really say that the main place where most people get caught up when they make a lot of money where I get caught up is you become somewhat of a sucker because the people that are selling the Lamborghinis, the people that are selling the Rolexes, the people that are selling uh, the bottle service and all the lifestyle stuff and everything like that, that's really smart people who are getting you to pay an excessive amount of money for something that really doesn't have any value uh, except in the perspective of other people that you want to think that you have value pretty much. Um, And so then you basically will just consistently get suckered into purchasing things that, what's the word for it, that that you're going to have to sell back for less in the future, uh, or you can't sell back at all. And then you end up taking, you you won't really understand money very much. And so like, for example, if my first um, house, you know, I didn't understand how loans and everything really worked. And so I bought bought a big multi-million dollar home. And the reason why I got out of it, like to this day right here, um, I actually do better than I've ever done before, but I have no furniture. I don't own anything. I have three pairs of clothes. And the reason for that is because when I looked at back over <clears throat> all the years of all the things that have accrued and all the, the bank interest and all the money from buying the appreciating assets and then uh, all the money that could have just been invested in, for example, something in crypto, I could have, I could have invested in the peak of the 2017 bull run and still be way up right now. And um, so that's just basically the thing I really learned is that as you as you make your money, you don't want to be concerned with other, what other people think because that's how you get suckered in by smart people into buying stupid things and then they take your money and then they go and invest it in something. You know? <laughs> this is all true. So take us back, Alex. How old were you when this, when this first windfall came about? Because you, you were in the military before. You were Air Force, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I was, I was military Air Force and I'd say about 22... <sighs> It's hard to remember, about 23, 22, somewhere around that age range. Uh, I got out of the military and I started an SEO business where we would basically do anything SEO search engine optimization wise. And uh, that business, at, at its, I think its peak got to around like about $400,000 per month. But we do everything where it was just um, just ranking people's websites for them, yeah. ranking it. Or uh, basically agencies would outsource all their information to us. I do information marketing. Uh, literally anything you could possibly imagine SEO that we sold. And honestly, just during those times, just probably just a lot of money spent on bottle service partying and and buying, you know, cars and stuff like that. And the one thing I I will stress uh, about all this is I had a really good twenties. It was, it was a good time. I don't really, I don't so much regret all of it. I just wish I had been a little bit more financially literate when it comes to putting money away. Cause at this time I had all this money laying around the, the craziest thing. is I had all this money laying around in cash, just not doing anything that could have easily been invested in all sorts of stuff. And so, I mean, uh, uh, just again, I mean, there, there's, there's all sorts of stories. Like for example, when on, I'm like my 28th birthday or something, we rent a Dan Blazerian's jet for like 40 grand or something. And then went to Vegas <laughs> and 40 grand spent, out, the, out the window. It was quite yeah, an just, experience just, though, wasn't it? Dude, oh, it was, it was, it was all very, very cool. It was all exceptionally cool. And I have so many good memories with my friends and, and everything like that. But at the same time, you know, if I was going to give anybody any advice is I wouldn't say don't like not live it up and have a good time, but there's, there's difference. There's, 
what's the word for this? <clears throat> I don't personally regret any of the times I've had with my friends and all the fun things we've done. It's just sure. there's ways to live it up at the same time while also making yourself financially literate so you're comprehending what you're doing and you're comprehending how to actually, you know, put money aside to invest in things. Do it because, I mean, just one of the reasons why I got really into this bull run and I wasn't in the last one and I wasn't before this, um, I got into Bitcoin about $5,000 in the March crash. Um, Excellent timing. It was, I mean, it was, it was, I, I was just like, I watched the 2017 bull run and I watched the 2000, uh, I, I don't know when the first one was originally, I think it was like 2014, 15, but I watched so many of my internet marketing friends instead of going and partying and doing all sorts of goofy stuff. Um, and I really just being, what I think my, my downfall was, was I was arrogant and thought there wasn't anything else that I could know. You know, I thought, you know, I'm really smart in doing this. And while I wasn't going blowing all the money I had, I also wasn't looking on how to learn about money and how to invest it properly. And so I watched multiple people go in the first bull run, the second bull run, make a killing. Yeah. And so when it crashed this, this 5,000, what I did specifically is I sold my house, I sold my cars, I sold all the things I own. One of the reasons why is because I knew it was going to come back around and I want to be in the position where I could go and be reckless. And so I, I think, I think the bigger thing out of this is like, there's, there's the, the, the crazy party stories or stuff like that, but more so the biggest thing I learned all of is when you have a big house, you have all these cars, you have, uh, you have loans that are for things that you're paying for. And then you have all these, these expensive items. You don't have money to strike when the time is right. You have to be, you have to think about guarding this lifestyle and how you appear to other people. Um, more so than like, for example, when this, when this big crash happened in March, I have no, I have no depreciating yeah. assets. I have nothing but money laying around to just go in on it. And so I was able to take all the money I made from selling my multimillion dollar home, and just stick that in the Bitcoin at $5,000 and just go, you know, there's no way this thing is, this thing's not, this is, this is pretty bad where it's at right now. And this is just due to COVID. It's not because the fundamentals of Bitcoin or, uh, I wish I'd put in an Ethereum then, but, uh, <laughs> this was like the, the fundamentals haven't changed at all since then. So I'd yeah. say that's probably the biggest lesson from all that because if while I was out, you know, buying all these things and, and doing the jet, when I go and make a lot of money, I'd be like, okay, cool. So I can buy this car, get this house with this thing or do that. And so I'd be saving up my money and keeping this money on hand that's also depreciating instead of thinking, oh, how can I deploy this uh, to then make myself a lot more money? And then I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't strike the first bull run. I couldn't strike the second bull run because of this lifestyle. And then I finally learned that lesson um, to to have money on hand when blood's running in the streets. And it, I think overall it was a good decision. I think you know? so too. So a lot to unpack there, but how, let, let, let's just, let's just take it back. Okay. How cool. far ahead are you right now from where you were in 2013, 2014, because you sold all those, those assets and you could have this dry powder on the side <clears> to <throat> actually get into the price points that you wanted to get into. Because mm. if you would have kept doing the same things you were doing, those jet was those those jets were nice. Yeah. The bottle service is nice. The Lambos are beautiful, and everything is great. But if you kept going down that road, could you be right here where you wanted to be? Absolutely not. Um, it, from just two points to two, I know because I know you're a business owner as well, mm -hmm. and you know, it, and it's just two aspects of that. First off, it allowed me to get into cryptocurrency at the right time because I literally don't have anything else to spend money on. There's nothing that I'm not going to go into some monk-like speech or something like that. I just don't, I just, I don't have, there's nothing else that I could, I can really buy with money right now that I value very much. And so first off, give me a good uh, way to get in at the right point for crypto, but also within business, it allowed me also to build a product purely for my customers and my staff, my team, and really focus on the brand and the company and not really worry about making profits right away. And now the company is, it's, it's just doing really well and I'll leave it at that. Um, but both of those things right now, by, by getting away from, the vanity and the arrogance, it, I, 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 my net worth is significantly higher now than when I was sitting next to Lamborghinis and acting like a really rich guy, you know? So it, it, isn't it, isn't it the, the very, the, the toughest thing is to get away from that, that mindset of, I know it, I know it all, or I know enough to where you don't have to tell me a thing to yep. be able to get out of that ego mindset. How long did that take to get to where you're at right now? Because <laughs> I know there's a lot of hiccups and bumps along the way. I would say literally a decade. And I think, I think I had a little bit of a bigger problem than, mo than some people too, basically. Cause I mean, I think a lot of people get into entrepreneurship and maybe it was the same for you, but I, I, I think you've been probably an entrepreneur for a really long time and I was kind of new to it. But I think when a lot of people get into entrepreneurship, you do it from almost an underdog mentality, at least I do. So I, I definitely had something to prove 
and then you kind of read your own news clippings a little bit more than you should. <laughs> and yes. then it's, it's just like this, um, it's just like the, like when this bull market was first going up and then we had that first dip in, uh, I think really early January or something like that. Like yeah. I can almost relate the feeling was like when, it, when Bitcoin just kept going up and up and up. And so I'm buying it like, 38. I'm like, oh, it's going to be at 50 next week. It's just going to keep yeah. going up and up. There's no such thing as dips. And <laughs> um, and I think that's almost how you'll start to think. And you think you can just go in and do anything without learning anything more. And so, yeah, I'd say it nearly took me almost uh, almost seven to eight years. And, and I think there's a point where I was in my uh, house back in Dallas and I just looked around. I, I was I was spending all my day instead of working on my business or, or researching, you know, anything uh dealing with ac guys and and then dealing with the damn bank and their confusing loans and all the weird ah. things they were doing and then do you know having to deal with like homeless people coming in like throwing stuff at my house and stuff there's just all <laughs> these and then having to deal with like car weirdness with the, the the lamborghini and stuff like that and so i just had to sit down at one point i'm like why do i have all this stuff who did i buy this for why do i i'm single living in this four-story home with all this furniture that i don't use and what did I do all this for? And then I'm have this business. Why am I running? I then the business I was in at the time. I absolutely love the business I'm in right now. The business I was in at the time was good, but I wasn't madly in love with it. And when I didn't wake up every single morning, super happy to do, it. I'm like, why am I doing all these things? And the only reason I was doing all these things was to fulfill ego. And by saying, well, what if I just did things that only made me happy and didn't worry about how I appear to other people and what they think that I am? Well, what would that look like? And then it's really just made everything a lot better mentally. You know, I'm a lot happier, but that also being said, if we're talk, focusing on wealth and investing, um, it changed my life, you know, and that, that ego and that, that want to be a, you saw how much trouble it's gotten Dan Blazerian in recently or something with all the money you yeah. lost and that it, it's, it's a, it's this, it's just like, a, it's just this, this spiral. And then it, you don't really. I don't think a lot of people can catch it. It's very sneaky. It almost really caught me. I uh, fortunately kind of wised up and timing with everything paid off with how the markets and everything went because I got out of my house, I think, November before the the crash in March. And so, yeah. Yeah, you got lucky. Yeah, you know what? Here, so here's the problem. Just like we talked about, you either, either have to, and, and for you listening at home right now, you either have to go through these experiences or you have to learn from, from uh, mess ups like me and Alex. And it's yeah. the same thing. You don't have, you have to learn from mistakes. But they don't have to be your mistakes. Mm -hmm. So these things that we talk about, like, like my, my story was similar to Alex's, you know, uh, made, a, made a bunch of money. And of course, uh, had a big shift, separated from my wife, moved to Las Vegas. And where could you uh -oh. have, where could you have the most amount of entertainment when you have a lot of money and no responsibilities, Las Vegas? But you, but you will go through all these things and you will think to yourself, okay, well, I can be a rock star for a while and just go through the next pleasure point, pleasure point, pleasure point. And then you go, is that all there is to life? That's pretty yeah, bad. Exactly. Then you go to a next level and you're like, okay, I'm trying to, you know, I want to do more things for this. And there's, and there's another level. And I was, I always talk about uh, delivering happiness from uh, Tony Shea. Yeah. Great book. Yeah. And he talks about, you know, these three different levels. So as you are sitting there and you're like, you know what, I don't think I'm going to be a millionaire anytime soon. This is cryptocurrency digital assets. You don't know what could happen. So the big thing is, is to try to make these plans now, be aware of what could potentially happen and set up some type of system or some type of mentality to go, okay, I don't want to be a, I don't want to be a screw up like Rob and, uh, you know, waste all my money or be like Alex and make all those stupid mistakes and buying Lambos and popping bottles, things like that. You can do those. Those are great. But as time goes on, you have to think about what is the bigger thing? What is the bigger picture? And of course, this is funny because as we were saying this, Alex is in his, in, in his nice uh, office there in Austin. It looks beautiful. I'm here in my indoor pool. And it was like, well, easy for you guys to say. But remember, I'll remember this. Alex has probably been in that office for quite a long time. Still a minimalist. This mm -hmm. house I've had, I've had for over 17 years. These yep. are just the things that we've built over time. So just be aware of what's going on. Yep. That's, um, that's absolutely huge what you saw of chasing the highs because I just I, I clearly remember too, like, what is, what is my point of living? Is it just to chase the next big thing, the next thing to buy, the next car? Like, all right, so I have this, I had like a $400,000 Lamborghini. I'm like, okay, so is the only thing I have to look forward in life is moving to like the Highland Park, which is like, the, I think, have you, you've been to Dallas, right? Yeah. Yeah, you right. know, Highland Park, it's like the Beverly Hills. I'm like, is the only thing I have to look forward to and the only thing I have to work for 
is to moving into a bigger box that I can live in in Highland Park and getting a five hundred thousand dollars, six hundred thousand dollars. Is that like is that is this what life is? Is this everything I'm going to do? And I'm like, no, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, right now, it's people are sitting home that are probably thinking, hey, I can do that. I can do that right now. And of course, these are guys. But but <clears throat> it's it's a weird thing because as you go through it and you make and you make all this money in crypto, you will. Start to think about what is the bigger purpose, and that's that's the whole point of uh, this video today. Just to bring to you some information about what could potentially happen, and go from there. All right. Yeah. So, Alex, I want to take too much of your time. Just a couple more questions. First of all, uh, you said you went in all in on in uh, March, right? Yes. So you 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 pulled the ditty, as I call it. I pulled. I I I went very very much all in. Um, and so yeah, I did pull a little bit of a ditty, uh, in March, a little right. bit. So why did, so did you just go into Bitcoin or did you do anything else? No, I, I had, um, <clears throat> so at that time, I, I really didn't know too much about cryptocurrency and I wish I'd really known a lot more because I wouldn't have gone all in Bitcoin. I would have, I would have totally bought Ethereum at a hundred dollars. Oh, like, yeah. holy crap. Can you, a hundred dollars Ethereum? Yeah. But um, anyways, I can't complain. <laughs> um, I can't complain at all. And so it crashed in March and what actually happened is Right before that, I bought my first, I bought about $30,000 worth of Bitcoin. Um, and then I started seeing it go up. And then I was like, wait a sec. And, you know, I've seen this, I've seen this before. I know that the fundamentals of Bitcoin, I know Bitcoin's fundamentals didn't change. It dropped from like, I don't, I'm not exactly sure, but about 10,000 right. ish to 5,000. Like the fundamentals didn't change at all. It's because of COVID, but the tech and everything is all there. And I've been waiting yeah. for the moment to get in. Um, and so I took all the money from selling my house and just stuffed that. All in there, and I mean, of course, I had I had savings. I didn't I didn't pull Diddy. I'm not. I don't have that <laughs> that bunch of brass balls in my body. Yeah, uh, that guy is another level, is tough, especially with all the dips and everything. But um, anyways, yeah. and so yeah, then I went into that, and from March onward, I mean, you saw it would just go up and up and up and up, and I was it was actually a great time because I wasn't addicted to crypto at the time, so I could just put yeah. it in there and forget about it. You know, I was yes. like, oh, okay, it goes up like yeah. this and that. So now it's a little bit of a different story, a different level. Yeah. I, and so yeah. what, what then happened is it, it just grew and grew and grew and it got to, uh, then I actually was getting very close to the Diddy levels. It was like 80% of my net worth with how much of it had, uh, it had grown. And then I, uh, I reduced down and I de-risked a little bit, uh, during that first major dip. Uh, and so now I have about 40% in right now. It's pretty good. It's pretty yeah. good. So now that you've done that and you've learned from like, Oh, if I just would have done and gotten into Ethereum, yeah. What do you see on the horizon for yourself? What other cryptocurrency projects are out there that you're like, you know what? That's a good one. I'm going to take a look, a hard look at that. And not that we're telling you guys to invest. We're not uh, financial yeah. planners or advisors. So, so with, with anything that comes to cryptocurrency, I sit around and probably research about four to five hours a day. I'm really, really heavy into it. But I also, am, like I've talked about in the video, I'm very aware that I'm ignorant and I, there's no way I can tell where this market is going. You know, everybody, the reason why I really like your channel is you're the one person who just put Ethereum only going to 10 K. I'm like, okay. You know, like, like, at least we're looking at some reasonable bets here. I hope it goes to 20,000 or 41. I saw someone on other channel, $41,000 by October. Sure. <sighs> we'll see. Um, we'll see. We'll so, see. Right now, I carry uh, I carry my biggest investment is in Ethereum, but the the coins or tokens that I'm really have a lot of faith in. I absolutely love Ada. I think the CEO of Cardano is just incredible in their business sense. And like what I what I try to do is I I can't trade, and I'm kind of like I've seen your channel where you're just all across our Virginia, and I'm not going to try and be a trader here. I'm just going to look at things that have good sound fundamentals. Um, and Ethereum, the fundamentals of Ethereum really frustrate me with the gas fees and I'm not fixing it. It's kind of like dating someone who put on a lot of weight and they've been telling you for years they're going to lose weight and they just won't. <laughs> they like, just okay, won't next it. week we're going to do it. <clears throat> well, you won't have to pay. Uh, I've been buying a lot of NFTs and the gas fees are just really starting to irk me. You know? um, hey, no. but, uh, so I absolutely love Cardano. Um, that's probably my third biggest or I, Ethereum's first, Cardano second. I really like VGX. Uh, for anybody watching this, you know, one of the first uh, alts I invested in was uh, based on uh, digital asset news. I was watching it and I got in at about 50 cents. Uh, but I remember watching it pump from 19 uh, cents to 50 cents. I'm like, oh my God. And I, I got into 50. I'm like, I'm too late. I'm too late. Uh, just, see, this <laughs> is why you shouldn't says, listen Alex. to me. Everybody says that. Yeah. Yeah. This is why you shouldn't listen to me on my, any of my crypto mm -hmm. advice. Um, what else do I got in here that I'm really into? 
Yeah, so, so, so as Alex looking at that, I will say this. What Alex just said about him talking about, I, I just don't know. I'm the same way. I just yeah. don't know. I mean, I, I have a good, I have a solid understanding, <clears> but do I know where things are going to go? No, I don't. But I always want to invest in the people. Yeah. And just like what Alex said about Charles Hoskinson, I will invest in people. I will invest in the Steve Ehrlich. Uh, I will invest in Alex Mashinsky. These are the types of people and, and uh, you know, teams that I, they build. I'll do that all day long. No, 100% with like BGX, for example, I remember you made a video and said, well, you message the CDO and they'll respond. And so in my company, I think one of the reasons why we're really successful is because I'm, I'm obsessed with the customer and I'm, I'm answering support tickets and doing all these things. And so yeah. I tested that out and I, I sent him a message real quick. He responded to me like that, helped me with the issue. And so that, that got me enough to go really uh, deep into it. It's a, um, it's, it's a basic fundamental, right, Alex? Yeah. You just, you have a customer. What does the customer want? I give that to the customer and everybody's happy. It's, I don't understand why people uh, make this so difficult. No, it's, yeah, it's the same exact reason why I'm just, I'm, I'm slowly like being converted from Ethereum to Cardano's because um, Hoskinson, he's far more focused on building a great product. And I I'm not saying that Ethereum and their team over there is trying sure, to sure. do anything. I'm, I'm a big fan of the founder of Ethereum too, but he's, he's trying to just build something that's going to last long term, regardless of um, the ups and downs in the market and building a good cryptocurrency and, and you're just trying to build something good fundamentals wise. And so my theory with my holdings really is like, I don't, I, if, if people that have been doing this two times and two bull runs aren't going to be able to catch the top, I'm not hundred percent confident I am. So even worst case scenario, I missed the top. I'm very comfortable holding Ethereum, Bitcoin, Cardano for 10 years. Um, the other ones wow. I got, I got a lot of reef because I like that. I really like um, Bridge Mutual. Because okay. I think insurance is going to be, it's just needed. And then I. Reef and Bridge Mutual. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've, seen, I really, yeah. I've seen Reef in my comment section. I thought it was, <laughs> honestly, there was so many. I thought it was, it was one of those uh, spam bots. So oh, like, yeah. It's, yeah. You got to invest in Reef because it's going to help the ocean. And da, da, da. Yeah. No, that's what I thought it was too. My friend told me, my, I, my friend told me when it was, it's probably like uh, next to VGX, it's probably one of my biggest uh, mm -hmm. ROIs, but I, I just, to, to generally just be straight up about Reef, I just bought it because my friend who's very, very good at crypto told me to buy it. And I'm really <laughs> coming around to it a lot more because it's kind of like Avi on Polkadot. And I think Polkadot products are going to be um, really big. And then, I mean, hey, there's... Yeah. Which, hey, thanks for telling, telling the truth. Because a lot of people are like, I did it because all the fundamentals. And Alex is the only one that's like, you know what? The, my friend said it, so I'm going to get it. And yeah. I, I'll be honest with you, some of the times that's the same thing with me. Oh, see, it's, it's, I, my friend, he's... Um, He's got some, he's got some good, uh, he's got a good head on him. I got a few other ones, but I, I wouldn't really feel comfortable throwing them out. That's okay. I'm not like, you yeah, know, that's okay. but yeah, I will take favorites. it. Yeah. I want to take a look at reef. It sounds good. And then for everybody listening home, Ave, I will have, uh, uh the founder on Stani, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I've already reached out to him and he just uh, says, let's put something together. Cause if you're looking for the big play, DeFi, I think, could be one of those big plays. So if you're looking at uh, uh, one thing I'm compound. really into, though, that I have to throw in the one thing I'm, I'm actually like crazy about NFTs. These the 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 yeah. I got some crypto pumps a little bit earlier on, and I started looking at I just like holy moly, that is going to be the billionaire pissing contest of the future. <laughs> Here's the thing: you'll have to look all that stuff up and tell me about it because mm -hmm. I look at NFTs and I'm like, I don't get it. I'm going to miss these opportunities. I know I am. And I think NFTs is going to pass me by. So it's, I need somebody uh, smarter than me to figure it out. I, th I think with all your holdings in crypto right now, I think you'll be okay, even if you don't buy a crypto punk. So, I think but uh, those, I'm ex uh, that's, you see how much they're going for? Like, uh, I think like an alien crypto punk just sold for like 1.2 million. And then it's, just, it's, it's going to be the billionaire calling card, I think. Yeah, I saw Mike Novogratz's company, the one for the NBA, whatever it was, and they're selling for like hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it's only going to go up, and it's only going to be bigger. So, I can see that. Yeah, right. I'm. I'm really excited. I bought a lot of uh, digital art yesterday. That and those hash hash mask and uh, crypto punks, I think, are going to be. I don't think they're. I don't think they're going to have like the the big explosive returns. Right. I mean, if you got a crypto punk in December, if you got if you got an ape crypto punk, it was worth. 70,000 now it's there's one selling for like 1.8 million so that's definitely a gain right there but i think <laughs> i think over gain. like a 10-year period it's just a good place to store money but the, yeah you never know you never know right we'll see and we'll see okay. well i like them so much because like, like cryptocurrencies that's tied to like currencies the market's going up and down and whatnot mm -hmm. but nfts are really more tied to fiat value right now and there's very few of them 
and peop, and you don't have, there's only 10,000 crypto punks. And so you don't have, like you see with Pokemon cards, a Charizard's $55,000, yeah. but very few people would buy that. But there's a small minority of people where it has that value to them. So it doesn't have to be mass adoption like with Bitcoin. Like the entire world has to, or at least 10% of the world has to accept Bitcoin for it to go up. This right here, 20,000 millionaires and billionaires just have to agree on the value and these things go nuts. And that's already kind of happening. Yeah, yeah Cuban's buying them up right now. So, so we'll see. yeah, it, we'll see. And it's all about scarcity, right? Yeah. Jackson, you don't have to have a million Jackson Pollock paintings. Just have a couple of paintings and there you go. Well, all there's right. only nine alien crypto punks. They're all owned. And so Elon Musk can literally go to, the Mar go to Mars, but he can't buy an alien crypto punk see, right now. There you yeah. go. So, we'll see. So everybody, that's what's that to look out for. Alex, I don't want to keep you on uh, too much. Uh, I appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on. And this is just, again, a, a good opportunity just to talk about what could potentially the pitfalls and shortfalls and also get into uh, what uh, could potentially be the next big thing. Alex, I want to say thanks. I will put your uh, the link to find Alex and what he's doing in the description below. And that is it. Any parting wisdom? Uh, <laughs> I don't have any. I don't have any for anybody. Everybody watching this is crypto watchers. I just have have a good day. I think we've covered it. All right. So yeah. thanks for watching all the way in. Appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.